Welcome to the Simplify Your Life podcast. It's Coach Simona and I'm glad you decided to tune in. Hey everyone, in today's podcast episode we're going to talk about the meaning of self-criticism and I will share with you three in-depth tips on how to stop being critical of yourself. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Simona, certified life coach and author of the book 111 Ways to Simplify Your Life. I make weekly podcast episodes on personal development, so if that's something that you're interested in, make sure to subscribe. Now, before we get into my three tips on how to stop being critical of yourself, let's talk about the meaning of self-criticism and where it actually comes from. Self-criticism is all about having a negative evaluation of yourself, often as a result of failing to meet your own standards or expectations. So in a nutshell, When you criticize yourself, you're seeing yourself in a negative light and attributing unpleasant events or circumstances to your lack of competence or knowledge. Now, let's talk about where self-criticism actually comes from. Individuals who are highly self-critical often had a difficult relationship with one or more of their parents or primary caretakers growing up. Self-criticism may be a result of not meeting your own emotional needs trying to be perfect at everything, or having unrealistic expectations for what you can achieve. Let me give you a few examples. Let's say you had a parent who was obsessed with cleanliness and order, but you were a bit clumsy growing up and sometimes spilled things. An overly critical parent in this case would scold you for spilling things, yell at you, and criticize you by calling you names. Years later, you will internalize their voice and criticize yourself every single time you spill something, or think your house is always messy, no matter how much you clean it. Another example. Let's say you had a parent who wanted you to excel at everything. They pushed you hard to be the best at school, get all the awards and gold stars in the world, and every single time you came home with anything less than an A, they yelled at you or grounded you. Now, years later, you've internalized their voice and have impossibly high standards for yourself. Maybe you see anything less than perfection as a complete waste of your time and are often critical of yourself when you take even the smallest break. Plus, you also feel guilty because you could have been working instead. Now, that leads me to the next important question. What is this internalized voice of our critical parents or primary caretakers? To make it simpler to understand, let's call it the inner critic. Your inner critic is always there, lurking in the background, narrating and saying mean critical things that you used to hear growing up. It's so ingrained in your psyche that you don't even have to think about it. It's always there. So what can we do about it? Let's get into my first tip on how to stop being critical of yourself. Become aware of your thoughts. The fact that you're looking for a solution for self-criticism and you want to change the way you talk to yourself means that you're already one step ahead and you're aware that there is an inner narrative that you need to change. So let's talk about becoming aware of your thoughts. What is the easiest way to spot them without reacting and replace them with more helpful ones? There is a great tool I use with my clients called the Automatic Thought Record Tool. It helps you track the link between your thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. In the case of having self-critical thoughts, the first thing you need to do is pay attention to the most repetitive negative thoughts that you have on a daily basis. They could be something like, I don't deserve this. I will never be successful. They are so much better than me. The next thing I want you to do is download it for free by visiting bit.ly slash thought record tool. Now, after you open it, you fill in the situation that provoked you to have these negative self-critical thoughts. For example, you were scrolling on Instagram and you saw these beautiful models who made you feel self-conscious about your body. So you start having self-deprecating thoughts such as I'm ugly. Why can't I look like that? I will never find true love, etc. Write down in the second column all of these thoughts. Now, I want you to assess the emotions you felt as a result of these thoughts. Maybe you felt angry, sad, frustrated, anxious, jealous. Write all of these emotions and rate them on the scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being the weakest and 10 being the strongest emotion. Now, in the third column, you're going to fill in the behavior you engaged in as a result of these self-critical thoughts and negative emotions. For example, You spent 10 minutes stalking a celebrity's profile, then went on to watching their stories, then felt even worse about yourself, and decided to open that big bag of cookies and drink some wine to escape the pain. Okay, now in the last column, 
I want you to think of an alternative behavior you're going to engage in next time you catch yourself scrolling on Instagram. What can you do to stop comparing yourself so much and beating yourself up in the end? Write down anything that comes to your mind so that you will be prepared next time you catch yourself in a negative thinking loop. To download your free copy, just click the first link in the description box below or visit bit.ly slash tool. Okay, now that we've learned how to become aware of your negative thoughts and change the way you react to them, what is the second step you can take to stop being critical of yourself? Develop self-compassion. One of the hardest things to do, especially if you're used to being critical of yourself, is to be kind and compassionate. So I want you to start slow and realize that developing self-compassion is a process that won't happen overnight. Self-compassion is all about being okay with who you are, accepting yourself in any given moment, and realizing that we all have flaws, and that is okay. One of the easiest ways to start developing self-compassion is to detach yourself from the self-critical storyline and ask yourself one simple question. How would I treat a friend in this situation? By reflecting on this question, you're going to achieve two things. First, you're going to put some space between your inner critic and the actual situation. And second, you will see the whole picture more clearly and make a better decision. The truth is that sometimes we get too caught up in our own drama, and it would be really helpful to step back and assess the situation objectively. By thinking about what you would advise a friend in this situation, you're going to come up with a plan and be proactive, instead of sulking and repeating the same self-critical narrative over and over again. Now, if you want to learn even more ways on how to develop self-compassion, make sure to listen to episode 109 after this one. I will leave a link below. My next tip on how to stop being critical of yourself is to accept yourself for exactly who you are. Becoming aware of your self-talk and being more compassionate with yourself will naturally lead to self-acceptance. But there are also specific things you can do to accelerate the process. The first thing you can do to accept yourself for exactly who you are is to get to know your strengths and weaknesses. If you haven't journaled before, I would love for you to try it out. All you have to do is write down somewhere the answers to these two simple questions. Number one, what are my three greatest strengths? And two, what are my three biggest weaknesses? Now, I want you to pay attention to your critical inner self-talk while you're writing them. You may find it hard to come up with three strengths, or you may feel a strange sense of comfort and familiarity when you're beating yourself up while you're writing down your biggest weaknesses. The purpose of this simple exercise is to detach yourself from all the things you've just written and see them objectively from a distance. Now, the second thing you can do to start accepting yourself for exactly who you are is to practice stoicism. Stoicism teaches you that the path to happiness for humans is found in accepting the moment as it is, by not allowing yourself to be controlled by your emotions and using your mind to understand the world. In the case of self-criticism, practicing stoicism will help you sit with your uncomfortable thoughts and emotions and let them go. For example, next time you feel sad, instead of thinking about the next thing you can binge to numb the pain, you can choose to sit with it. I know it's going to be hard and your resistance will be strong in the beginning. After all, how can you sit with yourself and be okay with it if you're being self-critical and mean to yourself, right? The thing about practicing stoicism is that the more you do it, the more detached you will become from your own self-critical thoughts. And in the end, you will accept them for what they truly are. Just thoughts. So next time you feel agitated, sit down for a few minutes and listen to your inner narrative without judging yourself. Notice the sensations in your body, the tension you feel. See what's happening with your breath. Do you feel pain in certain parts of your body? Become the silent observer and let them go. Now, if the concept of practicing stoicism is new to you, check out episode 89, where I guide you step-by-step on how to do it. The third thing you can try if you want to practice self-acceptance and stop being critical of yourself is to be loving and kind to yourself. We all know that practicing self-love is essential, but how do we actually do it? Well, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time explaining that right now, because I'm actually working on a brand new YouTube video on this topic. So if you want to be the first to know when it goes live next month, head over to youtube.com slash coach Simona. But I want to give you something to get started. The first step you can take towards self-love, acceptance, and kindness is to put yourself first. What do I mean by this? 
Next time you find yourself spending too much time obsessing over your work, your partner, family or friends, I want you to put the focus back on you. What do you want? What need are you not fulfilling? How can you take better care of yourself right now, at this very moment? The choices we make define our entire lives. So I want you to start thinking about choosing yourself by putting your needs first and taking better care of yourself. The smallest step you can take today is schedule 10 minutes for yourself to spend it on guilt-free, pleasurable, uplifting activities that are just for you. The truth is that if you take better care of yourself, you will be more present in your relationships as well. And I'm going to be honest with you. You can't actually go from self-criticism to self-love in a matter of minutes. And I know that listening to a podcast episode isn't going to be enough. So I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I've been working on something very special to help with that, and I can't wait to share it with you. I can't reveal it yet, but for now I'm going to say this. I'm going to give you all the tools you could possibly need to solve this problem. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for listening. If you found this episode helpful, please like it. And subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss out on my weekly podcast episodes. I'm sending you all my love, and I'll talk to you in the next one.